after it goes in the clay's kiln, you can take it out and be like, hey mom, look, I made something, I'm not a failure. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today I want to talk to you about one very specific thing that can change your glaze game for the better and forever. Now granted, the high majority of people who glaze, especially dip glaze, are already kind of in the know about this thing that I'm about to tell you. Because usually potters only make this mistake like once or twice before they're like, Oh uh, yeah, that's probably why my glaze is messing up. Now as usual, because this is technically kind of a learning channel, I do have to explain a little bit before we go in depth about what I'm about to tell you. But if you don't want to hear the explanation, and you don't want to hear any of that, and you're like, Downs have been glazing for some 20 odd years, there is nothing you can't tell me that won't surprise me. I am a pro. And click this timestamp right here, it'll fast forward you straight through the intro of what I'm about to tell you. That way you don't have to go through all this fluff, that way you can hear what I'm going to tell you, and either go, Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. But for the majority of you, most likely you've just started glazing, maybe you're watching this video in a classroom. There's some basics that we really need to settle down into before we actually tell you what's going on. Because this is the kind of video that I would probably show a big beginning class of students when they're just starting their glaze phase to really show them like hey this one thing will really really help your pottery and if you don't do this well then you have no one to blame but yourself. This talk begins with the knowledge that there are more than one way to glaze a pot. For example if you're in a classroom setting you probably have these big five gallon buckets of glaze that look just like this and inside of these buckets because you're all gonna have to share these glazes and mix them up well and pay respect to them and don't mix them together you'll ruin them and there are mountains and mountains of chemicals that are the things that make the glass like substance on your pottery after it's gone through the glaze firing the process of whipping this up dipping your pottery in here to glaze them is technically called glaze dipping you know because you're glazing your pottery by taking your tongs and dipping it into the bucket of glaze. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But glaze dipping isn't the only way to glaze. You can also buy yourself a bottle of glaze, get a nice paintbrush, get your pottery, and kind of dip your brush in there and just start, just start going to town. Glaze dipping isn't the only way to glaze. A lot of homestead potters or non-classroom potters will go out, buy themselves a bottle of glaze, dip this brush, not, I mean, not, not this brush. Painting your pottery with glaze and a brush allows for much more control, but you do have to make a much more even coat. As for dipping this inside of a bucket of glaze, it's just gonna make sure that the whole thing's even to begin with, especially if you mixed up your glaze fairly well. And then of course there's a third way, where you get a pressure sprayer or an air sprayer, hook up your glaze right into that air sprayer, and just, just boom boom, straight at your pottery. Pew pew, get glaze, sucker. And I wouldn't make such a big deal out of this if I haven't been to multiple classrooms where people don't seem to understand this one simple thing. The majority of classrooms do what we call glaze dipping, which as I said before, means you've got a giant bucket, there's glaze in here, and you go ahead and whisk around that glaze, and then you dip your pottery in there, and it coats your pottery nice and even. But this one thing that bugs me so much happens every time inside of a classroom, because the teacher didn't explain what happens to glazes when the glaze actually settles and separates from the water. Dante, there's water and side of glaze? Yeah, what'd you think it was? Potter juice? This is a giant bucket of glaze, and this is probably what a lot of the glazes in your classroom look like, or at least what they're stored into. The normal protocol for glazing your pottery is to open this up, get some type of whisk or power drill, whip it real good in there, take your tongs, take your pottery, go ahead, grab your pottery with your tongs, and then dip straight in there, hold it in there for maybe a second or two, get it out, wipe the rim off, and then it goes in the glaze kiln. After it goes in the glaze kiln, you can take it out and be like, hey mom, look, I made something, I'm not a failure. But there's one thing many people don't seem to understand about the combination of water and glaze minerals. That being that the majority of glaze minerals, or the majority of things that make up glaze, are not water soluble. And this means that the water will separate from them at a certain point. In layman's terms, it means that the glaze chemicals do not dissolve into water. The water and the chemicals do not become one facet. They do not become one an item. They don't fuse. I don't know how many different ways I can say that. You ever get a glass of water and put some sugar in there and stir it up? At first, you can see the sugar in the water clearly, but after a while, it begins to kind of dissolve and disperse into the water. That's because sugar is technically water soluble. 
These minerals and these glaze chemicals are not water soluble. They will not dissolve into the water. This is actually no big surprise. This surprises almost no one who understands what solubility is. But at the same time, the majority of people don't seem to understand that you need to mix up your glaze as well before every single dip because the glaze minerals will actually start to sink back to the bottom of the water because of course, they're more dense than water. In fact, I made a glaze yesterday to explain this exact point. This is a glaze that I made not too long ago. I probably made it about an hour ago. And already all the glaze minerals and glaze chemicals that make that nice shiny layer of glaze on your pottery have already floated down to the bottom of the water. This is technically not glaze. This is a giant layer of water on top of a giant layer of all the minerals and chemicals that make up glaze. And this is important for one primary reason. When you dip your glazes, you want all these minerals and chemicals to be floating in the water, homogenous, hom hom homogen when you dip your glazes, before you dip them, you must mix this glaze extremely well. And I mean extremely well for the reason that you want all these chemicals and minerals to be floating in the water in a homogeneous fashion. This means you want the suspension, or at least you want the glaze, to be the same all throughout so you can get a nice even coat. I bought this see-through bucket and made glaze inside of it specifically for this one demo right here. All too often do I see this inside of classrooms. Well, it's time for me to glaze my pottery. I'm just gonna get a whisk and I'm gonna start stirring around my... This yep. is not okay. Yep, okay, there we go. That's good enough, I stirred it for all of three it's seconds. It's time to stop. Uh, what? I got no glaze on my test style. Why? Because you didn't get all the way down to the bottom of the bucket and mix this water together with the glaze minerals, you pretty much just dipped your entire piece in nothing but water. All because you didn't go to the bottom and didn't mix it for more than 20 seconds. This is the same exact thing that's happening inside of those giant colored buckets that we talked about earlier. Those big five gallon ones we were mixing our glaze into. This is the exact same thing that happens. Do not be that person in class who takes your whisk, whisks around for maybe all of five seconds and doesn't get all the way to the bottom of the glaze bucket and then wonders why your glazes came out bad. Everything that I just showed you inside that clear glaze bucket goes on inside of these giant buckets of glaze right here. And while you can't see it, there is a very large layer of water at the very top of this glaze. Look, stick my finger in there. I don't even get any glaze on my finger. That's how much water is at the top. But if I stick my hand all the way down to the bottom of the glaze, well, I can probably pull out a lot of glaze minerals, actually. This is the stuff that actually makes your glazes. Do not, under any circumstances, be that person who gets your whisk right before you dip your pottery into a glaze and just kind of limp wrists it around for five seconds and then wonders why your pottery came out bad while all the water is still at the top. Yeah, the other thing to remember is that this stuff isn't water soluble, which I've said a thousand times I know, but that means with time they will start to separate. That layer in between water and actual glaze mineral will get more separate and separate as time goes on, which means that when you mix your glaze very well, you have a set amount of time before those minerals start floating back down to the bottom. And because of this, I heavily suggest you mix your glaze, get your pottery with your tongs, dip them in if you are dip glazing, take it away, clean it, and then mix your glazes again. Do not mix your glazes and just dip all your pottery at once with this one big mix. This doesn't really work that way. The more time that passes, the more that layer in between water and mineral is gonna start to separate. They're gonna start floating down to the bottom of the bucket which means that you're, sadly enough, gonna have to mix almost each and every time you dip your bowl, your cup, anything that you're glazing. You should mix right before every time you dip, and you should mix fairly well.
And listen, I know, I'm highly aware. Anybody with a basic understanding of glazes and minerals and the fact that minerals aren't water soluble inside of in, inside of water is probably right now going, no duh Dante, we all know that. And because of that, this is more of a beginner video for most people who've never dipped before. But if you don't believe me, believe my friend Sue. Sue has her own blog and channel on this specific subject, talking about glaze specific gravity and layering your glazes and making sure they're well mixed. She showed me a set of test dials one time with the difference in between mixing 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and 30 seconds. After seeing the evidence she presented to me, I was like, okay, so I am mixing my glaze every time from this point on. But if you don't believe me, don't take my word for it. Tell them, Sue. Hey there, Dante's Dirty Potters. I'm Sue McLeod, and I wanted to talk to you about the importance of mixing your glazes really well. The reason for this is because glazes are made of solid particles that are suspended in water. And these solid particles are heavier than water, so they're naturally going to sink to the bottom of the bucket. The heaviest particles sink to the bottom the fastest, and then the lighter particles layer themselves on top of the heavier particles, and then the water rises to the top. So you get this layering effect. Now a glaze recipe is designed so that the materials in the glaze are in a specific proportion so that the glaze turns out the way that it's expected. And if your glaze particles are not mixed and homogenized, the glaze that you dip your piece into has the exact same proportion of materials as your glaze recipe, then your glaze is likely not going to turn out. Or your glaze might have too much of the lighter glaze particles and all the heavier particles are left at the bottom of the bucket and they aren't actually incorporated into the glaze that you then dip your piece into. So in order for you, you to have best glaze results, you really want to mix your glaze really, really well before you start working with it. I did an experiment where I took one of our studio glazes where I work and I did a mixing test where I used the stirring stick that we provide at our studio. And I mixed a glaze for 10 seconds and then I dipped a test tile and then I mixed it for 30 seconds and I dipped a test tile and then I mixed it for 60 seconds uh, in total and I dipped a test tile. So I fired those test tiles and here are the results in this photograph. As you can see, the 10 second was barely enough to get the particles mixed so you don't even get the blue color that um, is supposed to be part of this glaze. This glaze is called sapphire blue and so the 30 second mix is getting there. You can tell that the particles are starting to get mixed together but they're just not quite there yet. 60 seconds of mixing is ideal if you're mixing a large bucket of glaze that's been sitting for over 24 hours. So I recommend that everybody who's mixing a glaze manually, who doesn't have a high speed mixer, actually stirs their glaze for 60 seconds to start out with. And then as you're glazing, um, I recommend stirring for five to 10 seconds in between each dip as well, because it doesn't take long for some of those particles to start sinking to the bottom of. I hope this helps to show you the importance of mixing your glazes really well. Thank you, Sue. You know, sometimes these people just don't believe me. They just need an actual expert to verify it. No problem, Dante. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I know this was kind of a short video, just because this wasn't really like an in-depth video. I just wanted to explain that the majority of glazes, especially homemade glazes, you know, if you're buying yourself a bottle of glaze, much like this, this has special chemicals in it to kind of keep everything nice and the same throughout, all homogenous. So you don't really have to mix these too much, although it is suggested that you mix them anyway. But for someone like me who makes the majority of their glazes at home and tests them at home and puts them through a lot of different things, then you really need to understand that the majority of glaze minerals, for good reason, are not water soluble. In fact, it has to do with a lot of food safety reasons, the link of which I will leave down below for you. That's a whole different discussion. We're not ready to have yet, but if you want to see that discussion, it is from Ensika. I think it was 
in the year 2014 or 16. I will leave that link down below for you so they can talk about food safety and water solubility inside of your glazes. But the main purpose of your glazes being stuck together with water is so that that water kind of acts like a host to carry on all of your minerals onto your pottery. Unfortunately, they don't forever and ever stick together and dissolve inside each other, right? The minerals don't dissolve into the water. So because of that, you have to really make sure they're mixed up to get a really good yield on your ceramic artwork. And if that means mixing your homemade glaze before you dip every time, you're mixing your glaze every time before you dip. Don't make me do it like the passive aggressive girls on Instagram. You have to every time, every time before you dip. I bet that hit home with like every high school class right now. That wasn't even a joke, that's just true, they do that. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you wanna see any of my actual artwork, the links are always down below. My Instagram, the Facebook, what time I go to bed, the Discord channel, don't worry about the third one. Good luck on your guys' next ceramic projects and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Get glazed, sucker.